Welcome to the R video tutorial on the randomization test. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about the randomization test in the two sample setting. So we're also going to look at the T test and the Wilcoxon test just for com some comparison. All right, so what I've done is I put craving1.csv out in the repository. So you might want to go grab that. I'm going to read it in and then look at the head of it. And notice my window pops up here, pick Craving 1, and here I have some weird artifact because I have the data that was on a Mac, but this won't really uh, cause a problem at all. Here's the Craving. It's basically mock data from a clinical trial where they were looking to see whether Lorcasering reduced people's cravings. All right, so what we want to do first is just try the standard t.test. Now, notice I'm not actually paying attention to any uh, of the assumptions or anything. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's see, the variable is craving in my data set, and the other one is kind of messed up. So I might want to try to figure out how to get around this. And we can try to just copy and paste this from here and see if that will work as the column name. And then the data set is equal to crave or crav1. And we'll see if this runs here. And we can notice real quick that it did run, no problem. We get a p-value here of 0 0.8827. So nobody would say that these two were the same. It does give the mean for the location group and the mean for the placebo group. So it does give us information. But what we're really interested in is to see how these differ if we were to just play around with them. So we've got the Wilcoxon test, which is Wilcox test. We can do the same thing. And essentially all you need to do is copy and paste what you had in the other one in here. And you can run this one as well. And notice it says it cannot compute exact p-values with ties. That's okay. That means your p-value here is approximate. And notice the p-value is very different than the one up here. The p-value up here is 0.8827, and here we've got 0 0.132, which is much smaller. All right, so let's just look here real quick at what this might look like for us. So we could do a quick histogram of the data. So I'm going to put in here craving, crave one, dollar sign, craving, and just get a picture of this thing. And what we'll notice real quick is a, this data is really not normally distributed. So the t.test is really violated, and the, t the sample size is actually small as well. If you scroll up, you'll quickly see that there's not that big of a sample size. If I scroll up here, you see the degrees of freedom is only 16. So it's not that high. Now what we want to do is try to do a randomization test. And the idea behind the randomization test is you're saying, well, the labels don't matter if H naught is true. If the, if the means are the same, then any labeling will work. And so what we can do is look at the labeling and then come up with something. So what we're going to do is scramble the labels. Now we're going to have to do this many times. Uh, so scramble the labels. And this can be done using the sample function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a new variable. I'm going to call it treat1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample my variable here, my variable name I treatment, And I'm going to sample it for exactly the length of it. So here is this, and it's in the Crave data set. And what I can do is how many of them am I going to take? I'm going to take the length of it. And then I'll put the crab in the front of this. And what the next thing I can do is just put in here, I need it to be without replacement. So I'm using the replace uh, in here. So replace equals false. Okay, I'm not going to replace it. So what it does is it just scrambles the labels. It uses exactly the same labels that we have, and it just scrambles them. Uh, I'm also going to pull off here the craving data because I don't want to scramble it. So craving does not get scrambled. The labels do get scrambled. Some people do it the opposite. They'll scramble the craving and then leave the labels the same. It doesn't really matter. Basically what you're doing is you're scrambling the data and you're seeing how this behaves. And then in here, all I have to do is calculate 
just basic difference in means. So I can say here, the mean of craving one, where treat one is equal to, I can do lowercase or in, is the, one of the means, and then I want to subtract that from the mean of the craving, where treat one is equal to placebo. It's back up here, placebo. All right, and then if I do this once, I'm going to do it once just to make sure it works, and we'll see what comes out. And it says I got NAN, not a number, and there's probably a missing value somewhere in the data set. So we can look at this, and let's say here, treat equals lowercase, or in, if hopefully I spelled that correctly. So let's look at this real quick to see whether or not everything f works out correctly. It says integer zero. So treat one, let's see what treat one looks like. I can see it says Lorcaserin and placebo, and did I spell everything correctly? So here, craving one should give me the values. Then when I subset on Lorcaserin, it says false all the way. So every place I have Lorcaserin is because I misspelled it. And you, these are types of things that people do all the time. So let's give this a go now, see if it works. I'm trying to leave my mistakes in here so you can see that often people make mistakes and it's okay to make a mistake. All right, so now that I have this essential idea, I just want to repeat it. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And then I'm going to put a loop around it. And I'm also going to put in here a container. So for I in 1 to 1,000, I'm just going to do it a 1,000 times. You can do it more than that if you want. And this one I'm going to need... Here, to put the brace there, and then create a container for the results. So I'm going to just call it res1. It'll be repeat 0 1,000 times. And this creates a container for me to throw the answers into. Then I just come down here, res1i. And this will put the means in there for me. Now, I do need to keep track of the mean difference when, for the original data. So this is another thing. So you're going to need to copy and paste this as well. It won't be as difficult. We'll have to come back to it. But here, we're going to have to do just a little bit different here. So this was CRAV1 craving, where CRAV1 treatment... Treatment equals lowercase rent. And do the same thing. You can copy and paste it here. The reason we need this one is we need something to compare against. We're going to see what happens if the labeling doesn't matter, and then we'll see what happens if the labeling does matter. Here's where our labeling matters in our actual data. So what we do is we repeat this many, 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 many times, and then we look to see where we fall in this. So we're going to do this a 1,000 times. It's going to give me a 1,000 results. And then I can do real quick, if I wanted to, just do a histogram of this so that you can see this randomization distribution. And here's the randomization distribution. What is the difference that we actually had in our data? In our data, we had negative 0.989011. Okay? So we would find out where this falls on here. So I'll call this our data value or our database difference in means. And then what I can do is just put a V line in here, or a B line. And it'll be vertical at data val1. And I'll make it red. Color equals red. And this will show me where my data exists across all these scrambles. And I can see it's in the middle. So what does that tell me? my data is not that uncommon if the labels were scrambled. So the labeling doesn't look like it matters. And if you want to get a p-value, you can do this as well. So you can get the mean, if else, here. What we have is res1. One. If res1 one is less than our data val1, 
then we're going to give it a 1, otherwise a 0. And what that does is it counts up the number of times that the scrambling was less than this value. And it's not a really a true p-value, but it's like a p-value. It gives us a sense of where this falls. And you can see, oh, I ran, didn't run the whole thing here. If I run this whole thing, I get 0 0.413. So it's really quite common in our setting here. So it doesn't look like this treatment worked with the data that we had. But the key thing about the randomization test is it doesn't have the assumption of normality. Nowhere in here did we assume things were normal. Nowhere in here did we assume that variances were equal. What did we assume? We assumed that the labels matter. That's it. We have continuous data and that the labels matter. We didn't assume anything about the distribution, just that it's a continuous valued variable. And this allows us to perform tests that are very much different than the T-dot test or the Wilcoxon test and with fewer assumptions. But it does take more computing power here to do this. So here's really where the randomization test comes in. So randomization is below. And here you can... Yours will also be different because this is random number generation, right? We're scrambling these. I scrambled them one way. You'll scramble them a different way. You'll get a different answer. But this is the essence of the randomization test. Does the labeling matter? If I scramble the, the labeling and I the data that I have is rare under the scrambling, then that means that the, the, the labeling mattered, okay? So if you scramble it a bunch and your data is rare under that condition, that means the labeling mattered. All right, so we'll move on to the next video.